Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Monday, August the 5th. Hope everybody enjoyed their weekend. Back to the markets here on Monday. And it will be an interesting week. I think it's going to be an interesting August. And I'm going to tell you why. First, let's go run through the numbers. We did get a little follow through from Thursday. Dow Jones up 30. NASDAQ up 13. S&P up 2. And Russell had a small little loss down 2 cents. So um, over the weekend, I had a um, um, few email saying, hey, Mark, you know, what's your thoughts on the market? And I put out, um, you know, I, I responded back with um, four pay, a four-paragraph uh, response. And, and I'm just going to briefly go through it with you. And I and basically said that, well, the S&P is trading at record highs. Treasury bonds and fixed income are um, very volatile and remain on a continued sell. Um, I think that uh, although we don't want to be calling a top here, I think that it's worth noting that with the VIX, which is in front of you right here, breaking down and at all-time lows, and we have complacency at all-time highs, and a lot of traders and retail investors plug in money at these levels, I think you cannot rule out that a top is near or a top may be even in. Now, I'm not advocating somebody to uh, go out and short the market. That would just be a fool's game, and I would not do that at all. Uh, matter of fact, I wouldn't personally short the market here. But you have to know and have to understand that where we are and where we have come, based on the Fed, you have to realize that at one point in time, this euphoria of buying stocks is going to end. And even if it's just a short-term correction, down 2 3 4%, I'm sure you wouldn't want to be putting out um, a swing trade, building a position at these levels, and only having the next morning get taken out because um, the markets have now reversed. Now, um, I am looking for clues and a trigger to short the market. I am not doing so today, tomorrow. It could be another week. Markets could go to 1710. Uh, 1720 actually so before we even get involved with shorting the market we need the market to prove itself that it is done going up and now has clearly reversed course so just please keep that in mind if you're gonna short the market it would really literally be a fool's game to do do not short the market uh, until you have reason to believe that the markets are indeed going lower um, so I did say that and I and I'm going to show you why I'm very cautious uh, you know uh, everybody knows the uh, you know we will, that that follow me. I am totally just day trading. Uh, there's no way that I would be looking to build a position at these levels. That's just me. That's not in, in my uh, trading plan. Um, if the markets the markets can go to literally 1800, and I'll just uh, make money um, pounding the pavement and eking out gains uh, during the course of the trading day, looking for ideas. Then it's just a uh, um, really really crazy when you see. Uh, stocks at you know uh, up two percent in the day uh, that's to me that's a little nuts and uh, I that's a word of caution okay now I, I want to get right into the charts because I have a lot of stuff to um, go over today but I wanted to show you this VIX and this is VIX closed outside of its Bollinger Band if the VIX closes inside the Bollinger Band today and it's just a strategy it puts a buy signal in the VIX, a sell signal to the market. So let's look at what happens today. This is going to be interesting. Now, the VIX can break down even more, more so, right? It could go lower below outside of the Bollinger Band, which has which has gone here before putting on a sell signal in the in the uh, in the VIX and a buy signal in the market. So we're going to look for the reverse. Same thing here, but we're going to look down here. So that's why I said it needs to close inside the band. If it closes inside the band, then that will give us a sell signal in equities, okay? But not until then. Now, this is what's concerning to me, and I mentioned this many times in the last several months. Bonds are selling off, and obviously from what the Fed's are, what the Fed is doing. And this is a 30-year on a weekly chart, so you're not going to see a lot uh, much of it. But on Thursday, or I think Friday morning's email, I showed you we had bear flags all about us, right? Broken down, broken down, and then we broke out of our last bear flag and going lower. Now we've broken through the 200-day moving average on a uh, 200-weekly moving average. Now uh, we're broke below that. The thing is, is it's okay if we have a rotation, right, coming out of bonds and money coming into equities, and that's fine. But when you get a massive liquidation, you have to be careful because that's going to trigger a sell signal in the market as well. So we need to really watch what bonds are doing. And I am not a credit guy by any stretch of means, but I do watch what bonds do um, intraday and at the end of the day. And I like to see where and what is going on with bonds. 
Um, and we all know that bonds are selling off, right? I had this on. I put this up. Oh, gosh. I think I put it up in April, um, maybe March. I said, watch for this big head and shoulders pattern. And sure enough, it did break the neckline here back in May. And we have sold off ever since. We have not had one. Well, excuse me. We should have. We, we paused for two weeks doing nothing. And now we broke down last week. So that's another concern for me. Um, and I'm just giving you why, um, you know, Mark, why do you think you, we, a top is so near? And that's the reason why, uh, one of the reasons why, again, with the VIX being so low, uh, complacency uh, sentiment is at all-time highs, uh, all-time highs. Now, remember, we haven't had the VIX this low since 2007 uh, in our financial crisis, okay? So that's something really neat to think about. And just going to run through some indicators now, the tick was doing really well right around the 400 level. Now it's starting to break down a little bit. And we're at 100. We're, we're above the zero. And as long as it stays above zero, that's fine, right? We had, when it breaks below 100 and starts to tick below 100, and this is the end of day tick, um, that's when you got you to gotta look for concern. You got to think, uh-oh, you know, now we're below. We can't get back 100. So that's something. But right now, I just wanted to go through some indicators, which I haven't gone through in a couple of days. When you have this uh, euphoria of buying and, and, and every, every day the market grinds up, and again, on no volume, mind you, um, you have to use caution. Uh, the, the indicators really don't do too much. Stocks above the 50-day uh, moving average. We're at these lofty levels here again. Okay, these usually are sell signal areas, and uh, we broke back up again. We did break down, but we broke back up again on Thursday and Friday. So let's see if this market can break down again. Okay, um, take a look at stocks above the 200-day moving average. Same thing. We're at these lofty levels here, and we, this did not break back above. So let's just keep an eye on on um, on the market in general. The Nasdaq Weekly Summation Index. On a 5.3 stochastics, as you can see here, this is still on a buy signal. Now, we did close lower for the week, but this is still on a buy signal. Um, this week or the next week actually will give us either that sell signal or we would just continue higher. So, something to keep, keep a look at. And now, we're at these areas where we usually get a, ro a rollover in a stochastics. And that's why I'm saying, you know, we want to use caution here this week. And not quite the New York Stock Exchange Summation Index has starting to roll over, but again, as you can see, the stochastics are up at these levels again, which is, uh, is something for hinting use caution here in the market. And what I'm thinking that maybe, just maybe, we might be um, getting into a market correction soon. And again, here we go. Ticks the new high, uh, new high, new low. I'm sorry, New York Stock Exchange, new 52-week low. I apologize. Um, this here started, and when you get in this area here, that you're fine. And we're still okay. But this is where you want to start working if we start breaking above 150, 200, and we start working higher, that's a concern. That's a concern to me that this market is actually um, starting to uh, slow down momentum. Now, remember, we had new ticks. We had new lows here at low at 50. That's not. That's exactly what you want. Market crept up even higher, but look what happened. New lows are starting to tick higher. So you can't have the market go higher and higher when you're making new lows in equity. So uh, that's a, a bit of concern. That's something that I just want to point out as well. Here's the bullish percent SPX. And we are still making new highs. But again, when you get above this area here, this 85 and 90%, which we're not there yet, you got to use, uh, you got to say, you got to use caution here. So if you are swing trading, um, take this data and say, let me tighten up stops or and again, I'm a big fan of buying protection. Puts are extremely cheap, especially with the VIX down at lows, um, at, 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 at yearly lows. Uh, I would be looking to do that if you want to ride that 2 3 4% correction out of the way. And again, no one knows when it does happen. Uh, I'm not saying to go out short the market. I'm just saying be, pre be prepared when this correction does come. It could be very forceful and very quick. Um, take a look at gold. Now... Gold hit that 1350 area really fast and then rolled back over. Now, gold is back up again, um, up only a few dollars in the pre-market. I do like gold short up here, but if the market does sell off really fast, I'm not going to look to jump in here with my eyes closed. I'd rather be a better buyer down here at the 1,11.50-ish area. Again, if it gets there, uh, but we used to have to use patience in this market. We are in a clear downtrend. So um, me, I like to stick with the trend, especially in uh, commodities and currencies. They usually trend very well. Uh, so I'd like to get into this area here, uh, look to put on a short uh, better than looking to buy. And if I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy in a retracement rally, very similar to this, but I'm going to buy way down low in this area here. 
crude oil. Uh, would not be looking to uh, buy crude, especially at these levels here. Um, this is a, a big. This could be another big breakout in crude. And then, if you want to buy a breakout in the crude, I buy a breakout above these weekly highs. Get a back test. Make a pivotal low, a low, a higher low from this low, and then you can um, you can identify your risk with this area here. Now. I like to see it come back down, take the slow out, and get into this 50-day moving average, which comes around the 100. Um, but that's, again, that's just a wish. I'm not sure if that's even going to happen. But uh, I do like crude higher going into the end of the year. Um, again, things could change, but I do like crude as of right now, where everything stands, going higher. I'd like to see it come back in this area, though, uh, or break above here on volume and then hold make a higher low off of this low and then that'll give me a great setup and a great trade management area knowing that my stops are below here okay take a look at the markets here's the s p weekly the cash we're at um oops, excuse me we're at all-time highs here as you can see on a weekly chart and uh, looking constructive I, again the weekly and monthly charts yes they are overboard but they look really really well that the markets are going to close probably at all-time highs at the end of the year now um we don't know what's going to happen, but it does look good. In the interim, right, in the short term, I'd like to see a pullback here. Now, we did get this consolidation. Now, we broke out of it, right? Now, we did, again, um, make new highs on Friday again. So, let's see what happens here. But, guys, remember, you can't just go up all the way up like this. Now, that, like I mentioned for the last couple of weeks, sideways consolidation to a pullback is really is healthy for the market and that's what happened you get this unwinding and you get energy building up again and then boom look what happened with the bollinger bands that's why i look looking at that in a weekly chart okay so i think that we could push a little bit higher and then eventually um you're going to get some either a catalyst or a big fund starting to liquidate and at least selling taking some profits here and then starting to move lower again at least back down to I mean you could get down to 1650 and still be in an uptrend uh, it's crazy but um, you know uh, and again we don't know we, I'm looking for areas to um, where my target areas is but I'm not gonna do that until I know that we at least we have a sell signal here here's the spiders and this is again take a look at this from the June 24th low where we are now from 155 to 170 that is a crazy crazy move and all on low volume I mean, this is just really crazy. I mean, this is going all the way down, almost no volume. Yeah, sure, um, we're in the summer doldrums. That does help the fact, the cause, that we have low volume. But it's just crazy. And um, Bollinger Bands pinch. We consolidated. Boom, we blast off. So now we're above the highs. We made new highs on Friday again. And again, guys, you know, can this go? I mean, yeah, it really can. Uh, it's just that I'm not a big fan of putting on positions up in these areas here. Okay? Take a look at transports. Transports did have an inside day, did not make new highs. No big deal. I think that's uh, pretty healthy um, for a little bit of a break. And let's see where that goes here uh, this, today and uh, this week. Dow Jones actually um, sold off early and then ended up um, recouping all of their losses as well. And here's the XLF. Not as quite as strong as the other sectors, but... Um, but this sector here needs to, you have to pay attention to this because this is something that you want to keep an eye on and then of course we have Apple doing quite well um, I like to see a tag this come down higher low from this low this pivotal low and then a breakout now again if we take out the 200 day moving average then that's something different here but I, I, I wouldn't be looking for a short just yet um, I, again Apple needs to prove itself here it's been based in all pretty much uh, all of um, all of 2013 in this area here so Basin building up momentum, looking good here, but I think you get one more dip lower, and that lower, that higher low off of these lows here would be or would be a safer buy-in in Apple. Might not happen, but it might be. That's something I'm, I like to look for. And lastly, is the Qs doing really well, as you can see here. Qs also making new highs. Technology really uh, a fire on all cylinders. Again, that's what you want when you want a market rally here, a nice healthy rally. So let's keep an eye on this week. Uh, let's see if we uh, start getting some clues that maybe a pullback is in order. Um, again, 
we're not looking to short the market. Let's get the market to tell us that, hey, it might be a little tired here. It might be time to short. And once that market tops and starts taking out the previous day's low, you're going to know that it's time to short the market. And you'll have plenty of time to make money, guys. Believe me. Don't be early in this market because it will hurt you. Trust me. Have a great day. Have a great week. And we'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care.